Thanks for tuning in. It's your girl Nisha back in the cup once again. So today we're gonna jump into this review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, this season six, episode three. Mm -hmm. Summer Stank, BKA Summer Bunny, but we gonna call her Summer Stank, okay? Versus Lyrica Anderson won't leave Bendy. I just do not understand this whole situation right here, okay? So she comes into the party and she's kind of, you know, she knows who this girl is. Obviously, Green Appleton told her, and it's all over the tabloid. So we know who Summer Stank is, okay? And she's asking her, like, what's up? And Summer Stank, like, you've been having my name in your mouth, and she's getting an attitude with her as though Lyrica Anderson won't leave Bentley is the issue, sweetie. You slept with her husband. And so as Princess is telling her, how about you be more respectful when you're talking to her because you mad disrespectful right now. She's trying to fight her. Princess done forgot what she was. She done dropped her purse. Ray J has to get her because guess what's about to happen next, okay? Princess, she was about to go after that trim. And then I'm like, what, what, what are we doing here? So Green Apple... She was about to go after her, but nobody wants to allow Green Apple to get close to the tramp because she gonna hurt the girl. And you know Summer Stank gonna end up crying anyway. And I'm like, girl, how are you mad at Lear for something that you did? You slept with her man and you knew that he was married and you don't feel any remorse about it. And this was before Lear even found out that she slept with her, okay? This is when they first meet each other. Of course, Yo-Yo still wants to make the peace, so while Summer Stank walked outside, they didn't, well, they didn't drug, drug her outside so that she can get herself together. She out there yelling and cussing, talking about people don't need to try her and how she's tired of her name being in people's mouths. She convinces, Yo-Yo convinces her to come back in and talk to Lyrica, who is sitting on the bench willing to have the conversation. She's a better woman than I am. So as they're sitting there, she says, okay, so who's going to start? And then Summer Stank says, it's your husband. <laughs> Okay, so then Yo-Yo realizes that, wait, it's about to get heated right here. Somebody gonna get snatched up. So she sits between them and they don't get anywhere, okay? Lyrica, I don't understand what's wrong with you. Why the hell you sat there and allowed this woman to talk to you like that? I get it when you're when it comes to the side pieces, you know, it ain't really, you can't blame them. You gotta blame the man because he the one that stepped out. But the fact that you let this female disrespect you like that and you stay sitting next to her, I'm just out done i mean stellar performance because ain't no way in hell that little tramp would have got the she, she would have had the opportunity to tell me the first time that i i'm the one with the problem and why am i having her name in my mouth see yo yo you can't save all these whores they don't want to be saved didn't project pat tell you this so anyway, Lyrica goes outside. She's waiting on her Uber, which took forever to come. So it was just enough time for some Stank to come outside and talk to her. And she says, you know what? I want to be an adult about the situation. You know, I'm going to be a woman about mine. And I'll just go ahead and tell you what you want to know. And she's like, so did you sleep with steak sauce? And she says... Yeah, I did. And it was multiple times. And so she's like, but you knew, he, girl, you can't blame her. But anyway, she's like, but you knew that he was married. Okay, and he knew he was married when he was sleeping with me. I was like, oh, girl, Lyrica, you set yourself up for that one, honey. So then she says, um, so she keeps talking about Lyrica's talking about her, right? So then she says, hopefully I won't F him again. I say, see, this is that point when I would have snatched that bitch up. This is that point when I would have called her mama, her mammy, and told her that you're going to be one less child. See, this is the point when she wouldn't have had no teeth in her mouth. This is the point when she wouldn't have been able to walk away from me because she would have been crawling away. See, I don't understand why Lyrica allowed her to do so much and say so much without any type of repercussion. Now, maybe it's because she just recently had a baby and she's trying to be responsible or because she knows that steak sauce ain't worth a damn. Whatever the case is, 
she just allowed this lady to just say whatever she wanted to. And so now all the side pieces in the world know that if they want to do anything, they want to get away with it and they want to be let, uh, taken care of, just go to Steak Sauce because his wife going to just let him do it. She ain't going to cause no, uh, no fuss. She going to let you do whatever you want to do and you're going to be good. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand how the hell she let that happen. Throughout this entire episode, it was a tribute to Nipsey Hussle. So you had a lot of the cast members saying positive things about Nipsey Hussle. Y'all know, you know, it was a sad, sad day in hip hop in in uh, L.A., just around the world. Everybody that he has, you know, impacted was very saddened by what happened when he was gunned down on March 31st, which is the day that my niece's, uh, my niece had a little dinner party. And then we all got the notification that he was shot. And then shortly after that, that he died. Like it was a very, very sad time. So everybody is just giving their positive words about times that they met him. Yo-Yo spoke about when she first met him and his daughter and how he was such a nice person. Green Apple says that he impacted her life as well. What's unfortunate is that once a person dies, that's when they're more popular. That's when they gain all of the uh, the, the successes that they were trying to, that they were in the marathon to get. You know what I mean? But this is why I say give your people the flowers while they are here. If you love them, tell them you love them. If there's anything that you may feel like you need to talk to, some unsettled um, issues that you guys have, talk about those. You know, I have a nephew that when his dad died, they didn't get to resolve the issues that they had. And so now this is something that he lives with. So if there's anybody that's going through anything, just talk it out, just pray it out, and just do what you can to rectify the situation. Because you never know when Hollywood unlocked Jason Lee. He dedicated one of his podcast episodes to Nipsey Hussle as well. And he had Yo-Yo there with April Jones and Damage. And Yo-Yo was telling us about when Tupac had died and how she was there. And she asked him if he knew who had shot him. And he nod his head yes and then no. So it was unclear as to what he was saying. But that she was there around that time when that was like a huge loss to hip hop and to the world. Okay. So this is why this is a touch situation for her. And then Jason Lee shares that his brother Rodney was killed at a bowling alley. And he says that there were two girls that got into it. And then I guess a gun was pulled out. Shots rang out. His brother was hit and actually shot in the head. That kind of put him in a very depressed state because they were so close. And then now he's just now trying to get over that, you know, or not necessarily get over that, but cope with it a little bit better. And it's really sad. And so Yo-Yo says the only way to combat gun violence is education. Zell, Paris, and April, they go working out. We find out that Zell and Paris are now staying together. And I thought he said he slept with her. I was like, what the hell? Am I hearing things? Y'all comment down below. Let me know if y'all heard the same thing. Maybe I'm hearing things. But anyway, <laughs> tells them that Monice invited her to be a part of her tour. And how, you know, our baby daddies are getting money. So why can't we get money? They're like, girl, you told her yesterday and she's like yeah you know I told her I think about it or whatever but I really think she's leaning towards doing it but like I said at this point I don't follow her <laughs> so if she actually went on with the whole tour thing y'all let me know down below but I don't know Bell makes fun of Moni's struggle notes and he says that she can't sing so April talks about Britney B y'all remember Britney B is the one that is the producer and she's working with Black China right now on her little rap career okay so she says that she's condescending and weird I don't know why she feels that way it's probably because of when they met at K Michelle's what was it a song release or album release or something like that and how she was like, well, what would you think, Moniz, if you heard that she kissed Fizzle Pop? So maybe that was the time where she feels like Britney B is weird. I don't know. I didn't really uh, pay attention too much to that part. So y'all let me know down below. So Zell Swag says that he's in a better place ever since he attacked Mr. Ray at the reunion last year. And so he, he says that they met up ever since then. So I guess they're, they're all in a better place. He brings Paris a Rice Krispie Treats and tell her, you know what? I, 
I am so proud of you. I have a surprise for you. And she's like, what is the surprise? He pulls it out. I was like, boy, bye. You play way too many games. They have a show in ATL and they're excited about it. They talk about Raz B, how he didn't quit the Millennium Tour. Then he went back and uh, <laughs> he didn't quit it. Then he came back to the Millennium Tour. Jay Boog, they show a clip of him saying that he's so low that y'all can't hear him. They're still doing the shows and they have upcoming shows in Atlanta. Fizzle Pop says he's a great father and he paints himself to be this beautiful dad. I told y'all, if y'all didn't watch that interview, Hollywood Unlocked with Monique, y'all need to go watch it because she told y'all the real, real. Now, it could be because she's a little bit bitter or that she just, you know, wanted to expose her baby daddy. We don't know what her real intentions are, but whatever the case, she spilled all his tea. So y'all go check that interview out. So then later on, they actually have the performance. Fizzle Pop is happy to be making money again. But I'm confused. What the hell was Raz being on Marion? Do they not want to be on Love and Hip Hop? Or did we just like just show the video of J Boog and Fizzle Pop? I'm just confused. I didn't see nobody else but them. I'm like, y'all at a sold out show and it's just two of y'all? They only wanted to see one half of B2K? So then we go over to talking about April Jones and his complicated relationship with her, but it's not complicated to them. It's like, you know, to them, this is like a no brainer. This is my best friend and she's actually letting me stay with her. My stuff is in store. She's been a really good friend to me and now we're considering moving in together. What? I'm like, how are you going to move in with your band member's ex-fiance? Like, why does that make sense? Not only fiance, but she has two of his children. Why are you moving in with her? You can't find nobody else. Well, Jay Boog is like, look, I don't care what y'all do in y'all privacy, but please keep it together for the sake of my bag, okay? So just in case you started to get bored with love and hip-hop, Hollywood, normal cast members, now you got Mickey Monday. He's new on there. And just in case y'all wanted to know, his name is inspired by a cocaine trafficker. I was, cur I was curious because as I was looking him up to look at some of his music or to listen to some of his music, I started seeing like cocaine trafficking and born in 1940. I was like, who the hell is it? But uh, Yo-Yo is there with Green Apple and uh, Corrupt. And she's seeking some advice on, you know, him. How do you like him? How do you like his flow? Is there anything he would work on? Stuff like that. So I don't know if she's mentoring him or if she's like his manager or what. I missed that part of the conversation, okay? So then Karo says his flow is really good, but he get like as far as his appearance is concerned, he's giving him rock and roll. Now I don't know whether that was supposed to be a diss or a compliment, but whatever the case, he gave it to him like that. So Mickey Monday says that he has a lot of pressure because his dad recently lost his job and then his mom is on him about getting his album done. So he's just trying to do the best that he can and get to where he's trying to go. He's a little bit nervous because it's been so long since he did the album. I believe but I'm like go ahead and do you do your thing just like Green Apple said you know what I mean hip-hop don't have no color because I believe that Yo-Yo asked him you know how do you feel about being a Caucasian rapper in a hip-hop community and he's like I don't feel no way about it so when Mickey and Corrupt walk off Yo-Yo is still sitting there talking with Green Apple and she says you know they basically recapping what happened at the event with Summer Stank, how she was just completely disrespecting Lyrica and all her friends, okay? And so she says, you know, back in the day, it used to be where women would get on wax and they would, you know, battle it out. As far as this jumping people, going back and forth on social media and stuff like that, we ain't used to all that stuff. And this is the reason why you need to stop trying to save that whore. Leave her where she be. See, this is why you need to have your focus on Green Apple right now because she's the one that needs your help. She's actually willing to be helped. This one over here keeps wanting to start issues and fights with everybody. So leave some of Stank with some of Stank is. So Stank sauced and touched down in ATL and Mama Sauce come pick him up in the Uber. I'm still trying to figure out why you didn't just go drive up there in your car. You didn't need to get in the Uber and come over to pick him up. You, girl, you're wasting money. So anyway, while they're in the Uber, she's asking him, did you treat? Did you cheat on Lyrica? He doesn't want to answer the question outright because he know good and well that he did, okay? So he keeps dancing around the question and she's like, come on, I mean, for real, why don't you go ahead and answer the question? Did you do it or did you not? He's like, look, I'm trying to keep my mind focused on my concert that I have tonight. I have a big opportunity right now. I'm not trying to talk about this. He gets mad. They pull up 
to the house. He jumps out talking about why she acting stupid and she being stupid and stuff like that. I'm like, don't you be disrespecting my mistake sauce, okay? She was just asking the question, trying to figure out what in the hell your problem is. But I see you don't want to talk about it. See, anytime you stuck between a rock and a hard place, you don't want to talk about it. You just want to ignore it and sweep it under the rug as though it never happened. But you done stuck with some mistake and now you embarrassed because she done exposed you. But I still, honestly, y'all, deep down in my soul, I feel like this is awful publicity he did not smash some mistake and this is just a way to get her on the show with that offset and uh, Cardi B situation so they brought her here to provide this show to give it some more oomph because they really didn't have much else to talk about okay that's that's really what I believe is going on here but we'll go ahead and play along with it now we're at the concert with Steak Sauce T-Pain is there he said this is a legend and he gave him a chance to get on his stage and he is very grateful for it so he's trying to avoid the situation at hand he says he needs to stay focused. So Lyric and her friend Saya, they're in the Uber. They're on their way over to the concert to surprise Steak Sauce and get some answers to these questions that she has regarding the information that she just found out from Summer Stank. Because y'all remember Summer Stank went ahead and told her, yeah, I done slept with your man multiple times and I'll do it again. Okay? So now she's going over here as a last attempt to save her marriage and talk to Steak Sauce. She's talking about how she's been with him for eight years and she's really not trying to you you know, raise baby Ocean alone. Is that that baby real name? Ocean? Y'all, please comment down below and tell me because I've been seeing people mention Ocean. But what is that baby's real name? I need to look that up. Hold on. Matter of fact, I'm going to look it up right now. A1 Bentley and Lyrica son name. They really named that baby Ocean. So he's on stage singing a song talking about keeping some secrets. You can, but Summer Stank can't because she done put all your little business and exposed you all over social media. As he gets off the stage, he sees Lyrica. She's standing there. He's like, okay, I see where this is going. Now I got to talk to her. They go backstage. They're sitting down. She's asking him, did you do it? Like, what's up? What's good? And Saya keeps talking. I'm like, why are you talking, Lyrica? You need to be talking by yourself and your friend need to be outside because this is not concerning her. Okay, this is between you and your deadbeat husband all right <laughs> so then finally she tells her Saya I got it just allow me to talk to him and he's like look I'll be chill I'll be good what are you talking about he calls his cousin and his friends over she's like I really don't care what they have to say about anything because they actually cover up for you when you're doing your dirt so how about they go sit down because I don't like them everybody leave out so now it's just her and steak sauce there so she finally asked him did you do it did you really sleep with some mistake I need to know this because this is going to determine how I move in this relationship. You've been very disrespectful to me so many different times and I'm just done with this steak off. I'm done. So she asked him, did you do it? He gets quiet. It's this dramatic silence. And then he says, yes, I did. It was when we were going through our issues. And I believe it was while she was pregnant that he did this because he says she, you know, her hormones were all over the place. And then she had cheated on him last year too. So Lyric is completely distraught. She can't believe she didn't hear what she heard. I was actually shocked. I thought VH1 was going to pull some stuff like, nah, I didn't do it. And then he keep denying that he did it throughout the entire season. But he actually admitted to doing it. He tried to justify what he did by saying, but you actually cheated. And I believe he's talking about the situation that happened with Safari. But is this what he's considered cheating? Because I thought we determined that they didn't sleep together. So is there somebody else that she actually slept with? Y'all come in and let me know. But with that said, that's pretty much all I got to talk about today. Get into the comments. Let me know what you think about this episode. And until next time. I'm ready to go. This tea is super hot. I'm about to go. I'm back, back. Three feet, no pressure.